There was a time in Android land when an inexpensive phone was, and this is a technical term, caca. Fortunately, we're a long way away from those days, but if you're a manufacturer, how do you put out entry and mid-range phones year after year and still give your fans a sense that they're uh, getting something innovative and that you're providing them with solid value to encourage them to upgrade while also keeping those prices down. I think Motorola has some solid ideas on how that's done. Let's take a look at the Motorola Moto G Stylus. Hey, if any of these videos on this channel have helped you, please hit that thumbs up, click that subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest content. In the world of tech media journalism, we're often reaching for and reporting on those game changers, the phones which move the needle, but few folks will actually get their hands on. At $270, the Motorola Moto G Stylus is a phone that most everyone can comfortably get their hands on. And that brings us to the Moto G Stylus hardware. This bad boy is thick with two Cs, but yes, a solid device with a better than entry or mid-range speaker setup. I'll dive into that more later in this review. You can get the Moto G Stylus in any color you want, as long as it's Mystic Blue. It comes with Android 10 out of the box and 128 gigabytes of storage that is expandable. No in-display fingerprint sensor under the sharp 6.4 inch HD Plus display. On the front of the phone, you'll get this hole punch 16 megapixel camera. And next to that, you'll get a speaker grill, which is one half of the stereo speakers, which are tuned by Dolby. The right side of the phone is where you'll find the power button and volume rocker. Nothing on the left side, but the SIM tray, which also holds your expandable storage. Bottom of the phone, you get a microphone. The other half of the stereo speaker pair, a three and a half millimeter audio jack, and a USB-C charge port. Oh, and the stylus. We'll talk more about that later. Top of the phone, there's a microphone and that's it. Back of the phone is where you'll find the fingerprint scanner, which worked consistently in my experience. Somewhere under that, you'll get a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which features 10 watt rapid charging. And the phone actually comes with a 10 watt charger. This version of Rapid will only get you to around 25% charge in 30 minutes, but it's better than five watt charging. No wireless charging at this price point, but you do get a solid 6,000 series aluminum components in the body of this phone, which makes this phone feel like you'll be finished with it before it's actually finished working for you. Caveat mTOR. That durability doesn't include official water resistance. Motorola only says the phone features a water repellent design. Hopping back out to the surface of the phone, still on the back, you're gonna get a triple camera system for your hard earned money, which takes fair photos at this price. You're getting a 48 megapixel F1.7 sensor with quad pixel technology, a two megapixel macro camera, and a 16 megapixel action camera with 117 degree wide angle field of view and laser autofocus. You'll get 4K UHD video recording out of this rear camera and up to 120 frame per second for slow-mo recording, 1080p video recording. No optical image stabilization, but they do include electronic video stabilization, which is just okay in my test result. Let's have a look at those photos, shall we? As with many cameras, the color leans toward highly saturated, but you'll still get a solid amount of detail in images. Taking photos of these flowers, which are shades of red and rough on camera sensors, you'll see that there's a good amount of detail in the petals. You'll notice the veins in the petals and the stamen and pistol are in focus and pretty sharp. These images are from the macro lens. It takes some fairly detailed images as well, but they're a bit soft and oversaturated. As you can see in this image here from the main sensor, it's actually fairly sharp and colors, though very saturated, are pretty close to what they looked like in real life. 
The front facing camera takes solid shots in optimal conditions, but will blow out some overexposed areas of the image. Let's take a look at some of the shots at night with the front facing camera. They're not bad at all and though soft will still give you a decent amount of detail. Night mode images are a mixed bag. As you can see in this image, the lettering on the sign is sharp, but that's because it has plenty of light on it. The palm trees and the darker areas of the images are very noisy or, or grainy. That said, the images are definitely serviceable and fine for sharing on social media. So overall, at $270, I'd call the camera competitive at this price point, considering what else is on the market in the US. Now, one of the things that phone manufacturers must do with entry and mid-range devices is create a hero, a killer feature which allows you to feel like you got your money's worth. Dependable operation with good enough specs may be a hero for some phones, but in the Moto G stylus case, it isn't the stylus in my opinion, but the Dolby tuned dual speaker setup. I've listened to a lot of phones and I've intentionally listen to the same sequence from The Witcher on a lot of phones, so I'm very familiar with how that sequence sounds with a really good setup of speakers all the way down to the craptastic speakers. For $270, I think the Moto has a hit on their hands with this setup when it comes to video content. If you watched my mid-range phone battle, you'll know that when compared to other phones in this category, these speakers also get just as loud as any other, including the iPhone SE 2020. And I know you won't be able to hear it through this video, but the hall scene in The Witcher shows just how well-tuned these speakers are. The great hall scene has all the echo and room ambiance of the great hall. From my ears, it was immediately noticeable when I watched this scene. Even the people across the room from the White Wolf who were calling out his friend Mausak's name sounded like they were across the room. They've done a fantastic job of tuning these speakers so that they present all the nuance in a well-produced stereo image despite their size. An impressive feat to be sure. But what's the music experience like from these speakers? Does it match the movie watching experience? The music experience is comparable, though on some tracks you will notice that the mids are a bit muddy. You can actually change the dynamics of this though by how you hold the phone. We have to remember that the smartphone is to some degree a speaker box and how you position or hold the phone will change the characteristics. For example, when I place the phone in this holder, the sound is much more crisp noticeably more so than when I listen to the phone in landscape mode. And we can go into a deep dive on why that is so, but at the end of the day, play with the orientation to get the sound signature you like best. The speakers are also great when it comes to nuance. The tuning really moves all of the instruments forward so that you're going to catch the stereo image you may miss on other handsets. I think that especially at this price point, this is one of the better listening experiences on the market from a pair of smartphone speakers. Now, the stylus is supposed to be the standout feature and while some people may think of this as a cheaper alternative to the Note line of phones, allow me to temper your expectations up front. No. This is not an alternative to the Note as the pin is not an active pin and its palm rejection could use a little work. If you have your hand and the stylus touching the screen at the same time while writing, it can be a bit of a frustrating experience. That said, much like Motorola's wonderful enhancements to Android's operating system, this is also a very functional enhancement, but to your finger input you get sharper, more concise interaction with the interface for things like signing documents or gaming so that your finger isn't obscuring objects on the screen, but that's it. This is not an active pin. As it is labeled, it is just a stylus. There is some software included on the phone which takes advantage of the included stylus though. When the screen is locked, removing the stylus from its uh, silo launches a new note so you can actually jot down whatever is swimming around in your head. Now you can use a Motorola's Notes app or Google Keep. 
When the phone first came out, it was retailing for $300, which was already a decent deal, but this was made even sweeter as the price at the time is $270. Despite its lack of 5G and wireless charging, I think this is a fantastic phone and I can definitely recommend it for those looking for an inexpensive smartphone with few compromises. Hey, if you're trying to figure out which rate plan, where you're gonna buy this phone, if you're picking up a phone for the kids and this is their first phone and you're looking at rate plans and the most inexpensive ones out there, go ahead and check out reviews.org where our team has done all the research for you and they're gonna help you make that decision easier. If you have any questions that I did not answer in this review, please leave them in the comments below. I'll get to them. As always, I'm Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. We don't take it lightly that you're watching with us. See you on the next video.